So, after watching this movie, my reaction was, what the fuck did I just watch? However, my other reaction was, that was a really good movie. Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be another movie review for you guys. And uh, this time, reviewing a movie to you that I have heard many, many amazing things about. Many amazing things about. Things that, you know, people have called this movie um, the be one of the best sci-fi movies of all time. Um, some people have called this movie one of the best movies of the year. Um, so I definitely wanted to see it. And they also said it has the biggest what-the-fuck moment of all time at the very end of the movie. And it also is a very, you know, interesting sort of like experimental film. Like a lot of movies this year are very experimental. I mean, think about it. Boyhood was an experimental film. Enemy was an experimental film. Locke was. And now this film is. And that movie is Under the Skin. Now, Under the Skin was a movie that I was definitely really looking forward to because of all the critical acclaim that it got, especially, and I think really the person that got me really hyped for it was Chris Stuckman. Like, he can really make you hyped for a movie. He really can. He does a great job of doing it, and he really made me hyped for this movie. And speaking of Chris Stuckman, I'm going to use what he said to actually explain some parts of this movie. So, this is not only going to be a review, but I'm going to explain something about this movie that's very important. But let's just talk about what Under the Skin is about. Now, here's the thing about this movie. The plot to this movie is very basic. Very basic, and I'm going to give away a huge plot detail if I tell you guys what's actually happening in this movie. Basically, the basic plot of this movie is Scarlett Johansson plays an alien, an unnamed alien. Um, basically, we're just going to call her she. You know, they call her she, you know. Um, people who review her, you know, people in the movie, you know, um, she's she or the woman. That's all she's called in the movie. And she's sent down to Earth. I'm not going to explain why, but she is br brought down to, um, basically she's a seductress. She brings men into her home, and I'm not going to say what she does to the men or whatever, but that's basically what the plot of Under the Skin is. She brings these men into her home, and she's taken on the life of a human being. And, um, you know, she's taken on the life of a human being. She's very unsure about herself, basically. And what ends up happening is... Um, there's this one incident that ends up happening with one of the men. And she sort of gets this epiphany about something, and she starts to actually develop feelings and things like that. She starts to develop feelings and starts to take on the persona of an actual human, and that's pretty much what Under the Skin is really about. So yeah, that's really what the movie's about. It's really, but the thing about this movie that we need to say is that this movie is not your typical structured movie. There's hardly any dialogue in this movie. There's hardly, you know, it's not really like a, you know, structured plot. Like, there is a plot in this movie, but it's very much a um, character piece, definitely. It's, it's not your typical sci-fi movie at all. This is not your Michael Bay explosion sci-fi type of movie. This is not your, um, this is not like Star Wars or Star Trek. This is not like, you know, explosions, things like that. No, this is a very quiet indie film, and that's one of the things that I really loved about this movie. Let's get to the acting in this movie. The main star of this movie is Scarlett Johansson, and holy shit, she blew me away in this movie. She gives what is, in my opinion, the best performance I've seen from any actress of 2014 so far. I have not seen many performances from actresses that really, really sold me. There have been some really good actors, like... You know, um, Jake Gyllenhaal, or Tom Hardy, or Ralph Fiennes, or even Eller Coltrane from Boyhood. But not a lot of actresses. The only one I can think of offhand are the two from Boyhood, L'Oreal, um, L'Oreal, Linklater, and Patricia Arquette. Those are really the only two I can really think of that really made me, you know, they were really good in the movie. She gives by far the best acting actress performance I've seen of this year. And the thing is, with her character, she hardly speaks. She hardly speaks. She only speaks when she is um, basically, you know, getting the men to, persuading the men to come to, um, you know, to come to this room with her and get into her van. There are a lot of scenes in the very early in the movie where Scarlett, where Scarlett Johansson is just driving around. She's just driving around, and we just see her in this van, and... You know, really, this is one of those movies. It's very much like the movie All is Lost, which I personally have not seen, but I've heard it's very much like this movie. Or, say, even um, a movie like, uh, say, there's another movie that came out this year called Blue Ruin. I've not seen it, but I heard that's very much like this movie. 
Um, it's a very much a performance where you see her acting from facial expressions or the way she's looking or her mannerisms and things like that. And that's really cool the way she did that in this movie, definitely. Something very cool I really enjoyed about her character. As I said, her character is not the typically structured villain. In that, I don't really, you know, the thing about her character is we don't really know why she's here or what she's here. And as the character goes on, you start to know more and more and more about her. It's not one of those characters where right away you're like, okay, this is who she's playing. No, when you first see her, she's basically, it's, it's, it's extremely strange. When you first see her, we see her as like this alien, basically. And uh, I don't want to give away the amazing opening, but definitely she gave a great performance. Now, I would talk about the other acting in this movie. But there is no acting in this movie. There is no other acting in this movie, um, believe it or not. Except for, I believe, one other person. Jeremy McWilliams um, plays this character of this motorcyclist. I don't want to give away his purpose in the film, but he really is the one that I think was truly acting. And the reason I say I think he was the only one that was truly acting is because the way they did this movie is very cool. Um, basically... The movie takes place with her in Scotland. Now, what they actually did was Scarlett Johansson went into this, you know, black wig in the van. When she was driving around the van, there were hidden cameras in that van. Basically, when we see her seducing the men to come into her van, she's actually doing it. That's not scripted. She's just doing it. It's like an improvisational thing. That's why there isn't really much of a screenplay here. It's basically her coaxing men into coming in that's all real they did not realize they were into a movie basically what happened was they did that and then the uh, director said to them hey do you want to make a movie you know do you want to do you want to be in this movie under the skin and if they said yes he kept the footage in there and if they said no he you know did the right thing and extracted the footage out of there so that's basically very interesting in my opinion the way they've done that i don't think i've ever called um that happening before i don't think i ever called that seeing that before um there have been movies where they've hired real people to play actors but nothing like this this was literally them putting them into the movie and then telling them after that they're in a movie definitely that's very cool and i really love that about under skin that's one of the things i just absolutely loved about this movie now let's get to the directing of this movie. The director of this movie is Jonathan Glazer, and this is by far the best directing I have seen from this year. The way he wanted to go with this movie, the direction he decided to go with this movie, was absolutely incredible. He went in a direction with this movie that was very well done. I mean, he has everything down. The tone is very dark, very mysterious. You want to know what's going on from the first few minutes. The first few minutes, you're, like, you're going to ask questions. From the first, I'd say, 40 seconds of the movie, you're already like, what the fuck is going on here? And, you know, it, it you know, as time goes, it, you know, you ask more and more questions as it goes on. And the way he did that was definitely very well done, in my opinion. The director definitely did a great job with that. Also, the effect of not having, you know, tricking the actors into not knowing they were in a movie. Not really tricking the actors, but, you know, making the actors not know they were in a movie till after they did that scene was also very well done, in my opinion. And I thought he did a great job with that as well. Definitely, that, that was uh, fantastic, and I love that about the movie, definitely. Um... And uh, that's really what makes this movie a masterpiece. As I said, this movie is a masterpiece. It, it really, really is. Um, now let's talk about the other thing in this movie. The other thing to talk about is the cinematography in this movie. Also, the, the soundtrack to this movie, the score. Oh my god, beautifully haunted score. Oh, oh my god, so haunted, so haunting of a score. It plays throughout almost the entire movie. There are some scenes, um, I mean... When there is music, it's that score. It's the same score. It's the same score over and over again, and it's really cool the way it's done. Very haunting. Very much fits the movie, and I thought the score was definitely one of the best parts of the movie by far. I think the score was just absolutely fantastic. The other thing I will say is there are a lot of scenes in this movie that is absolute silence. Absolute silence. So, you know, this is not really a movie that, um, you know, there, there's absolute silence. You just see, um, you know, Scarlett Johansson's character going through emotions or whatever. Because one of the best parts of this movie is when she starts to develop emotions and more as it goes on. I'm going to talk about why she starts to develop emotions and things like that as the movie goes on. We're going to talk about that. But the other thing to talk about is this beautiful cinematography. Beautiful, gorgeous shots of cinematography. This is really what makes you think, what the fuck is going on here? And the way they did the cinematography was amazing. This is by far the best cinematography I've seen of this year. I mean, the shots in this movie, 
There are some really weird, startling shots in this movie. Definitely, there are some very startling shots in this movie. And I would not recommend this movie for anyone who is very sensitive. If you're very sensitive and you watch this movie, this is not a movie for you. This is not a movie for one for the faint of heart, definitely. Not a movie for the faint of heart. Definitely a movie for someone. If you can handle it, go see this movie. Uh, I mean, get this movie on Blu-ray. But if you can handle it, don't watch this movie. I'm going to tell you guys that there are some very graphic scenes in this movie, and I would not recommend you guys see it. The other thing that works very well with this movie is Scarlett Johansson, a very attractive woman, in my opinion, one of the hottest women working today. But, of course, in this movie, you know, everyone, I'm sure pretty much every guy thinks that. Every guy, you know, thinks when you say hottest um, actress, one of them always says Scarlett Johansson because she is naturally very attractive. The way this movie does that is they take that, you know, thing of her being attractive and they actually use it as something creepy. And I'm going to get to why they do that. You know, there's a reason why they do that and everything. But um, definitely, I thought that she gave a very sexy performance. Definitely very sexy performance. Very easy to be seduced. Honestly, if I was in Scotland and she came up to me, I'd fall for it. I would. I'm going to be honest. If I was in Scotland and I saw Scarlett Johansson in a black wig, in fact, some of these men even asked to her, hey, are you an actress? And she's like, uh, no, why would you say that? And they say, because you're fucking beautiful, obviously. And um, if I were, you know, seduced by her, I would say yes. I would definitely fall for it because she definitely is one of the hottest women working today by far, definitely. Definitely one of the hottest women working today. And the editing in this movie, the editing to this movie is fantastic as well. This movie is not too long at all, not too short at all. It is perfect length it needs to be. Um, I actually would have wanted this movie to be longer. I'm going to be honest. I would have wanted this movie to be two hours. I was that into this movie. That's how into this movie I was. That's how much this movie had such a big impact on me was just the way the movie was done. Definitely. It's so good. Now, there have been people who said this movie have left them in a trance sort of like state. You know, they, it's left them in a trance. They weren't able to like speak or whatever. And it's the, I think it's the way that they decided to portray this movie. As I said, people are going to react to this movie in very different ways. Sorry, I have to drink something. Um, but um, people are going to react to this movie in very different ways, definitely. She, they're going to react to very different ways. And, um, you know, one of the ways is that some people, it just left them into, like, this trance-like state. And I was personally not like that. I was just staring at the screen like, what the fuck did I just watch? Um, that's really what I was like, thinking when I saw this movie. Now, let's talk about the biggest part of this movie. Now, we're going to talk about some analysis here. Um, if you guys have not seen Under the Skin, please do not watch the rest of this video. I want you guys to watch this movie for yourself. I do not want you guys to spoil this movie for yourself. Please, I know you're not thinking it's that big of a deal of a movie. I'm sure if anyone hasn't heard of the movie, you're like, what are you talking about? I've never even heard of this movie. I don't care. If you guys have not seen this movie, do not watch the rest of this review. I encourage you, please do not watch the rest of this review. This movie will be spoiled for you. I'm going to spoil the most important thing about this movie. I'm going to spoil the biggest things about this movie. And it's definitely something that I recommend you, you know, I, I highly recommend you guys, you know, don't watch the rest of this review if you guys have not seen this movie. Go watch this movie and then you can come back. All right. So now we're going to get to the, basically the analysis. Now let's talk about the biggest thing in this movie. Why is this movie called Under the Skin? Well, let's think about it a little bit. So you guys remember that scene where Scarlett Johansson is, is home, she's alone and everything, and she starts to take off her clothes, she's standing in that mirror naked, looking at herself. And she's actually terrified at what she sees. She's terrified. Now, of course, there is that big spoiler of why she is seducing the men as well. She's seducing the men because she wants their bones, and, you know, she's making them, like, basically sink to the ground and turning them into jelly, basically, you know, where they have no bones at all. And she basically just wants, she wants their bones, um, basically. And, you know, the reason that she was so freaked out when she was naked was because of her looking under the skin. Now, of course, there is that motorcycle guy who chases her throughout the entire movie. And the question is, why is he chasing her? What does he want from her? What he wants is to rape her. That's what he wants to do. He wants to rape her. He thinks that she's attractive. He wants to have sex with her, um... He knows that she is taking these men. He's assuming that she's having sex with them, and he really wants to have sex with her. That's really what he wants to do, is that he wants to have sex with her, and um, that, that's really what he wants to do. Now, there is that com that, now, there is that logger, basically. Now, the motorcyclist is not the guy that uh, ends up raping her, though. It's the commercial logger that ends up doing that. The commercial logger is the one that wants to rape her, basically. 
Now let's talk about the ending of the movie. Why did he set Scarlett Johansson on fire? Why did Scarlett Johansson just, um, you know, you know, why did she just, um, you know, go away and everything? Because when she took off her skin, basically removed all her skin, she was an alien. Get it, guys? Under the skin. What this movie is trying to say is do not like someone just because of their physical appearance. Their physical appearance, for example, Scarlett Johansson, gorgeous woman, but the alien was not a gorgeous woman. She was actually scared, and really she was unsure of herself. And the first time we see her, you know, you're terrified of her, but as the movie goes on, you start to realize that she is just as scared as all of us, and she really just hasn't found her purpose left yet in life. And the reason that she takes off her skin is because she's looking under the skin at her true beauty, at who she really is, and... The reason that guy sets her on fire is because he doesn't know how to look for inner beauty. He just sees the outside. He just sees her skin. He just sees her as this attractive woman. The second that she is no longer attractive, notice the second that she's no longer attractive, he sets her on fire. The reason he, and by the way, I got this from Chris Stuckman's analysis, and I definitely agree with what he said, guys. I got this from his analysis, but, um, notice how when he sets her on fire, um, she, you know, um, she, that's when, you know, he sets her on fires, because once she takes off her skin, and she's an alien, that's when he sets her on fire. That is because he does not know how to judge inner beauty. He does not how to look at inner beauty. He doesn't know what inner beauty is. He just hasn't learned inner beauty yet, and that's the big thing about him in this movie. And that's one of the things that I truly loved about this movie, was the way, was the message of inner beauty. I never thought a sci-fi movie would have such a big impact on me and have such a great message of inner beauty. And this movie does that so, so well. This movie seems like it's going to be, like, a very creepy movie. I, again, the second you see her character, you're going to be creeped out by her. But once you find out, and once you actually get to know her, and, you know, the other thing I really like about the movie is when we see her in that van, it's like we're right next to her. It's like we're seeing, you know, it's it's very much like we're seeing her, um, you know, we're seeing how she's starting to act and everything. It's like we are actually seeing her. It's like we're sitting, it's very much like Locke, you know how I said in Locke where it feels like we're sitting right next to him in the backseat of the car? That's very much what Under the Skin is trying to do. When she's in that van, when she's all by herself, it's like we're right next to her watching her evolve into, you know, an actual person who has feelings and things like that. And she was just ashamed of him because he did not accept her, and that's why she basically um, burned, got burned alive, basically. That's what ended up happening um, for her. And um, I, she ended up, um, I don't know what ended up happening to her. We don't know. Maybe she was sent back to Earth. We really don't know. The point of this movie is that that does not matter. What matters about this movie is the inner beauty and that she was an alien that was full of inner beauty, and he did not look at that inner beauty. No one looked at that inner beauty. She did not like the inner beauty. Notice how when she was in the skin form, she had no idea what was going on. She was terrified because that's not her inner beauty. Her inner beauty is an alien. She's a scared alien. That's who she is. She might look like a confident woman, but she is scared. She's scared of the world. You know, she's scared of, you know, even eating cake. She spit out cake. She wouldn't eat cake because she was scared of that. She was scared of all this stuff. And the way they did that, again, was very, very well done, in my opinion, and I really love that about the movie, definitely. That's one of the things that will definitely stick with me about Under the Skin, and one of the reasons why I think all of you must watch it. Under the Skin is truly a masterpiece of a film. It is truly a movie that, after watching it, you're going to be like, what the fuck, but if you guys really think about it and you really process it, it really does make sense what they're trying to show here, and the movie does a very good job of showing that, definitely. I really love that about this movie. So that's basically my review for Under the Skin. Let me know what you guys saw this movie. Overall, this is by far my second favorite movie of the year. Not better than Boyhood. Boyhood is just... Boyhood is Boyhood. Nothing's gonna be better than Boyhood. However, it is my second favorite movie of the year. It is absolutely fantastic, in my opinion. Now, uh, by the way, guys... There is one complaint that people have with this movie. With them um, having those actors not knowing that they're in a movie... Some people um, complain that the actors are mumbling, and in my opinion, that adds to the movie because it makes the movie more realistic. It adds to the movie because it seems very much more realistic because if you were approached by a woman that you thought was hot, you would, like, start to mumble. I, I will admit, when I, see a, when I see a girl in my high school and I go up to her and I think that she's attractive, I will start to sweat, I will start to mumble, I will start to get teary-eyed, I mean, that's just how we are, so I think it adds to the movie definitely that they did that, and I actually like that they did that, I think it added to the movie, 
But yeah, that's basically it for my review of Under the Skin. Let me know what you guys saw this movie. Again, guys, link to my letterbox review will be down below. As I said to you guys, I will be doing that. And uh, yeah, that's it for my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys in my next review, which will be for either another movie review. I'm going to try to watch one more today. Or for my review of tonight's episode of The Bridge. So I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.